everyone, and welcome to day three of the Jurassic World build. I'm happy to be back and recording this very awesome series. It's done very well on the channel. I'm very happy to say that I'm excited for the future of this series. So, um, where we left off, I think we did the uh, Jurassic Cage, the, not Jurassic Cage, the Velociraptor, Raptor Cage, sorry, <laughs> I'm retarded. And then uh, we did the Visitor Center, which is off in that direction. But, um... This episode, I think I want to get two things done. I want to build a kind of like a um, carpool, because the place Jurassic Park has like those cars that run along around here, and they run through the paths and do all that, and I think I got a cool material for that. I think y'all like it. And another thing I want to get done today is I would like to possibly, and I say possibly, build like a, what's called, like the electricity shed from uh, Jurassic Park 1. I think that'll be great. And then I'll look at some Jurassic World buildings and we'll see how much time we have left. So, um, let's get started. So to start off on building the, um, the kind of parking lot where we're gonna get all these, uh, tourist cars, I tried gravel and then I realized I didn't really like the gravel in the roads. I'm gonna change the gravel between episodes. I'm gonna change it to, you'll see in a second here, when I finally realized that gravel is kind of ugly for this kind of a thing, like we're we're not going for parky, like not like parky, like a, like what's the word? Not going for like national parky. We're going for like uh, what's the word? Like a theme park. So everything should be paved. People don't want to walk around in gravel in your park. So I messed around. I messed up with the code when I was doing the slash sets. And then I tried the uh, roads from Mechanism, and finally I settled on the plastic gray blocks because uh, they actually look kind of like roads and maybe I can get a texture pack going and retexture those to connect so I used for the rail like I've had this idea for a while for the railing I used the fence bases because look at it it looks like the rails that were like um, guiding the cars which I really liked they, they look exactly like it almost just a little fat but it doesn't really matter though because I mean I'm not gonna have any cars am I question mark now I tinkered around here because I was a little confused I was trying to set up a uh, good ratio of cars like how many tracks I could have in this lot so I think I sold on five or four we'll see in a second here I do apologize, it's full. Then, to, uh, since the textures don't connect on the corners, I actually just put down some slabs, some stone slabs. Now I'm up here picking a block to use for the um, fences. I tried stone slabs like I did for the Triceratops cage, didn't really like that. So I went with surrounding it in stone stairs because I still like that kind of style. And then I topped it off with iron bars. Tinkered around for like 20 minutes over there trying to get those stairs not to connect. <laughs> there we are finishing off into the road. Well, we start on the iron bars. Make sure I got smart and just did slash slash set with my wand out. That worked. See, now I'm smart. It worked this time. It didn't work last time I tried this because I tried it on the Triceratops cage, if you remember, and it kept on leaving holes. But this time it worked. Not complaining. And then I, um, I did up the front gate with uh, wood because I thought that looked a lot better, like it was the style of kind of like Jurassic Park. And I don't quite remember. Did I use spruce? Oh, I thought I clicked jungle. It was late at night. I, I was being dumb. Uh, that's supposed to be jungle wood, but whatever. <laughs> and I covered up the um, iron bars kind of with uh, rose bushes and little bushes I made out of logs and leaves. 
because I thought that nobody in the park really wants to just see this big caged in area kind of in the middle of the area. So I just did that to pretty it up a little bit, make people want to go. Now I started making some placeholder cars because I don't really have any flange mod vehicles yet that look like the Jurassic car Park cars. If someone could get a work on that, I would highly appreciate it. But um, I didn't really have a choice here, so I just kind of made some placeholder ones, used carpenter's blocks, made upside down half slabs out of any block, and made them out of lime and yellow wool. And then I made, um, I used uh, slopes with glass to make the front. Kind of just a quick job to get it out of the way. Now I wasn't smart, I forgot the hammer can like move slabs, so I was like, trying to figure out how to do this, I kept on going down into the ground, and I realized, wait a minute, I can just hit these with my hammer and they'll be good. Now I tried doing this, but I noticed the cars weren't wide enough to make it look good, like putting the slabs over the tires, so I just ran up another layer. I tried continuing up the slabs and you know it took me a little bit and I just did glass. I was like, eh, glass. And I just copy pasted it with world edit throughout the rest of the world. Alright, now that that's out of the way. Kinda. I'm gonna get some uh, Flans mod or someone. I'm gonna find someone who can texture me a Flans mod car to make the uh, the tour cars. I don't really like that kind of poorly, quickly done car over there. Or maybe I'll just find a better way to do it better. Gooderer. Gotta do it gooderer. Next, let's work on making that power shed. Now, if I remember correctly, in the movies, it was like behind that visitor center because they like walked out to go. Um, get to it and I remember they run through the forest and there's raptors and all that stuff. Spoiler alert. But anyway, uh, let's get building. You know, I, I kind of just sat there and picked through blocks for a little bit. <laughs> Trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I did a brush for a little bit. I tried using the smooth brush. Uh, I couldn't really figure out how it worked. Like I tried, you see me putting the blocks up and I thought maybe if I do that it would like make like kind of like a smooth hill up to the top of that block, but it didn't really do that. I've never really used the smooth tool. So eventually I just settled with using the uh, dome and then adding a little bit of blocks to the sides. I do apologize, I was expecting this build to be a lot bigger than it was, so I like, I backed the camera out quite a ways. But uh, I do fix it in a few seconds. See so, you now I reset the camera to be closer. So for the path I uh, used carpenter's blocks and I put dirt down so the grass wouldn't grow. But then I learned that if you double click with dirt you actually get like this path effect where it like raises up by like a little bit of a tile, like an eighth of a tile, not even an eighth. If you look real close you can see the edge. 
But uh, I did that because I thought it looked real nice as a path, and I remembered in the movies the path was in fact made of dirt. Now I built that log there, in case you're wondering, because if you ever saw Jurassic Park 1, you would know when she ran through the forest, she jumps over a log in the middle, about in the middle of her path. And it's just laying over the path because the hurricane knocked out, knocked over the, all the trees, so there's a log there and she jumps over it. Now I do regret putting all these trees up so early, because you don't really see the effect of how awesome those trees look like I, I really saturated the area and the trees make the area look amazing I mixed acacia with 4x4 jungle well 2x2 jungle and one like single jungle and it looks real nice so now I get started working on the actual maven shed itself still leading the path up to there and then I took bone meal and ran around and bone meal up the area put some grass down just to give it that like it's not clean shaven it looks real nice and dirty Now I start putting those uh, Jurassic Craft fences back up because I remember looking at a uh, photo as well. There was a dinosaur fence on it because it was in fact an inside of a caged area. I made each area, like each, other than the gate, the sections of the fence are for blocks in the middle. And I made them three high, including the base. I didn't activate them though, because I don't want things running into them and dying continually. I'm especially proud of this build, honestly. I really like what I did with the forest. It looks really cool. So there, I'm putting up the fences. Now, the weird thing is, I, if I didn't explain this before, the, uh, the fences themselves, you don't actually get a block for them. You actually need to um, open up the fence base. It's got a little GUI in it. So when you right click on it, you put iron and redstone in it and you just like the direction you want to build and it builds to the nearest uh, corner in that direction and uses a certain amount of iron for every block. I think it's like two and then like four redstone. It eventually got pretty expensive. I think I spent just three stacks of iron building this fence, not including the actual um, blocks. Like because I'm in creative mode obviously, but like the iron doesn't like treat like you're in creative mode, it treats it like you're in survival. So I slanted up the walls slightly because I looked at a picture and I noticed it was kind of like a corner. It looked like it was just an entrance to like a tunnel way, which it actually is. But I did leave uh, part of it as flat just to get a little bit more depth and height out of the actual building itself. I didn't want it to be like, you know, like an actual bunker. I built it like that. And then I uh, slope off the roof, and I spent a little while trying to figure out how I want to do the door. So I depth, I put some depth in, uh, put it in the middle, not in the middle. I put it one block back from the front, so it wasn't flat. Now I experimented a little bit in the front because in the photo I was looking at, there's like these black holes, with, like exhaust areas where like air could get in, so it's not airtight. And um, I experimented, and I couldn't really find a way to do it right. I'll find a way later, I guess, but for now, we're just going to stick with that. So I, um, on the back side, I did make it go down slightly at a slant, because in the movie, there, the shed isn't really like a building. It's just a shed with stairs that go down to the ground, and in the ground, there's a tunnel system with power and water and electricity running through everything. So um, I spent about 10 minutes just figuring out how I was gonna do that. Now I do plan on doing the interior of this build off camera and then showing it to you later because it's gonna be a pain to record that because since I'm working in such an enclosed uh, space, this camera, this like auto camera clips on objects and when it clips, it just continually kicks back to the latest tick mark and then runs into the object again until you go and reset the camera. So uh, I'm just going to build it off camera, all the interior stuff, and then uh, show you what I did. Unless the things like massive, like the visitor center, then I'll show you my move. If you noticed, um... I did uh, cut away some land a few minutes ago because that was what I was getting clipped on and I didn't really want to reset the track because I felt like the track the camera was running on was really nice. 
Now I'm building um, air conditioning. Like, uh, air conditioning units outside, you can see the fan spinning, and I used grates. These are technical blocks, they look real nice. I put malfunctioning fans there, cut the line away. I put the malfunctioning, um, fans in there, because I want it to look like, you know, the power's kind of flickering, it's not quite on, but it's not off. It's there, it's just not running at full, um, capacity yet. I used a smooth tool over there, I finally figured out kind of how to use it, and I just filled in the holes, and, uh, it turned out kind of nice. I guess it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna use smooth tool over there in a few, I think, if I remember correctly. Now I made a railcraft tank. It's like kind of like a water tank, and I used um, iron fence blocks, not like iron fences, like iron fence blocks. And I um, just made a quick railcraft tank. I kind of wish I'd made it taller. I might go back and make it taller, and um, make it look a little dirtier because I don't really like the pristine color there is a there's a steel one i just went with iron because it was cheap and it looks like it was inexpensive well as john hammond would say spat no expense now uh the tank is actually structure it's a multi-block structure so it can actually hold water in it i think like ten thousand buckets but um right now it is um it's just that block and i added this roof on of iron um stairs and iron slabs now I ran a tube to the actual maintenance shed because I thought it would look cool. It looks kind of like, you know, the water's actually running to something. It's not just sitting there in a tank doing nothing. And I experimented a little bit with the uh, air conditioning. I built like three more units. I thought that would be sufficient. And then I, um, I world, out the la world edited out the land and uh, made some more fences so I got a little bit more area to build in because the picture I was looking at pretty much like it does right now. Actually, I think I got it pretty well. And there we have it. There is our maintenance shed. Alright guys, thank you for watching and hope you've enjoyed the third day of building Jurassic World. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. I am very proud of what I've done today. Don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. They're very highly appreciated. Uh, comment below if anything is wrong with this video, and I will see if I can fix it. All right, so um, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Have a great day.